This is the U.S. Coast Guard intercepting a shipment of cocaine. Here's the same crew intercepting another one. And another one. This was all in the summer of 2018. They seized more than 9,000 kilos of cocaine that was headed to the U.S. That may sound like a lot, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. In 2017, the Coast Guard intercepted almost 227,000 kilos of cocaine here, along the Eastern Pacific. That's because the U.S. is the largest cocaine consumer in the world. And to get to the U.S., most of that cocaine has to travel this way, through Central America and Mexico. With that comes violence. And today, Guatemala and Honduras are some of the most violent places in the world. It's a big reason why so many people are traveling north to seek asylum at the U.S.-Mexico border. But the story of Central America's crisis isn't just about America's demand for drugs. Another big part of it is America's war on drugs. Cocaine is produced in South America, along the Andes mountain range that stretches from Bolivia to Colombia. Starting in the mid-70s, most of the world's cocaine came from here, distributed by groups like the Medellin cartel led by Pablo Escobar. But they needed to get their product here, to the U.S., where by the late 80s, Americans were spending tens of billions of dollars on cocaine annually. And they did it this way. Cartels sent boats and planes loaded with cocaine through the Caribbean to South Florida. For example, Escobar's cartel primarily flew cocaine from Medellin to the Bahamas and then over to Miami. Miami is one of the principal branch offices for what can be called Cocaine Inc. It's got to be four or five times as much cocaine as we've ever seen before. As the drug has killed at least 34 people just in South Florida so far this year. So the U.S. cracked down on the Caribbean route. To stop those drugs on the way to America, I propose that we spend more than a billion and a half dollars on interdiction. They started catching shipments along the coastline, like this speedboat called a go-fast boat that was intercepted by the Coast Guard. And they worked with the Colombian government to destroy coca and fight the cartels in Colombia. The Caribbean route was dismantled, but the cocaine industry kept going. Cartels just needed a new route to the U.S., and they found it in Mexico. Mexican cartels already had ways to get drugs over their border and into the U.S., so Colombian cartels shipped their cocaine to Mexico. But their boats and planes had to stop somewhere along the way to avoid detection and to refuel. And the ideal place to stop was Central America, especially Honduras and Guatemala. Not only were these countries directly south of Mexico, but they had just been through decades of civil wars and foreign interventions. Their governments were weak and easily bought off. And criminal organizations had power. It was an easy place for the cartels to turn to. Back in Mexico, the new cocaine routes turned lucrative fast. The Mexican cartels got bigger and more powerful and started controlling more territory. And the government responded. It's a war. 10,000 federal troops and police to Juarez. Mexico cracked down with the help of the U.S. He will not allow his country to be taken over by narco traffickers. This crackdown was largely a failure. It caused chaos and violence spiked. But it did make it more difficult to send cocaine directly to Mexico. So cartels started shipping cocaine to Central America, to landing points along the coasts, and would move it into Mexico over land. Central America wasn't just a stop along the way anymore. Suddenly, it found itself at the center of cocaine trafficking. And all the things that made Central American countries ideal as refueling stops made them vulnerable to the violence that comes with drug routes. Criminal organizations already powerful in their countries started forming alliances with Mexican cartels. In Guatemala, this group aligned with the Zetas, while these went with the rival Sinaloa cartel. Violence surged here, along the northern Honduran coast, where cocaine shipments arrived, and at the border, where the cocaine is transported north by land. 
With violence on the rise, it was now Central America's turn to crack down. Throughout the region, governments embraced harsh policies to combat not just drug traffickers, but all organized crime. Policies backed, again, by the U.S. To find ways in which we can come up with more aggressive action plans uh, to improve security. We have a shared responsibility when it comes to dealing with uh, drug trafficking. Newly militarized police forces arrested thousands. Prisons filled up, but the violence didn't stop. And that's where we are today. Honduras and Guatemala have violent death rates on par with active war zones. And thousands of migrants are taking dangerous routes through Mexico to the U.S. to escape the instability and violence. For decades, the U.S. has tried to stop drugs from coming in. But it's only really succeeded in changing how those drugs come in. And Central America might be the place that's feeling those changes the hardest. Hey, if you've made it this far in the video, you're probably the kind of curious person that appreciates learning. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like a scientist and be a better problem solver. They have courses on everything, from calculus to astronomy to logic, and daily problems in math, science, engineering, and computer science. To learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash vox and sign up for free. The first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Brilliant doesn't influence our editorial at all, but it makes videos like this one possible. So go check them out.